This is a stripped down version of uh, our robot last year. All the electronics are gone except for the motors. Yes. Um, so it's just the frame. What it basically, I'm going to quickly just explain what everything is. There's obviously wheels. They're centered on the side so that if the wheels turn, the robot turns at its central axis. If they were pushed back, then the central axis would be pushed back, and therefore it would be harder to understand how to control it in an automated zone. Um, if it had to turn ever. Uh, that was the point of that. It's got acrylic sheeting that is positioned vertically so that you can easily grab the electronics. It turned out to be a little bit weird for electronics though, because if a robot was ever jostled, then the electronics would turn off and then turn back on, um, which sometimes made our robot go crazy, which is kind of odd. Uh, Unexpected consequences. It's got a lower base, so that, which is what you can see here. It's got a lower base, so the center of gravity is lower, so that when this arm is flying around, it's not going to hurt the robot at all. That was kind of just a stupid thing that I wanted to do. And I'm sorry, everyone, for doing that. Um, let's see. It's got two motors that control how it moves. If one motor goes forward, the other backward, it spins. And it's got one motor to control the arm. The arm assisted by a rubber uh, a piece of elastic that adds force to the movement of the arm. So basically, and then up here there was a servo so that we could control the opening and closing of the claw. Uh, the robot was supposed to move, bend the claw down, and then close on the pillow. There are several flaws with this design. Uh, one is none of us are very straight with a hacksaw, so it looks kind of bad. Um, mostly like, no, that's fine. It's like when I was cutting this out, that was just that was just bad. And then on this side, that was just bad. There's just random cuts in this, and there's random holes. Also, when we had someone making new holes, they decided to just freehand it. <laughs> yeah, I know. It was. They decided to freehand it, and it didn't work out right, even though they were told specifically not to. So. If you ever want to do something that is different than what the group agrees that you will do, please bring your considerations up. Don't just go off and do something. If you go off and do something, you can mess up, and it will be your fault. I don't want to be a jerk, but like, we had a bunch of extra holes because someone decided that they would just freehand instead of using a drafting machine, and I don't want to measure it. Um, let's see. Failures. Another failure that is somewhat similar is there's a piece of... Uh, fake wood. It's just wood that was uh, chopped up and added, added glue. It broke right here, which meant that this bottom part just sort of would bend over. And so I fixed that with cabling, which doesn't work very well. If this had instead been something stiffer, like plastic sheeting, it would not have done that, and therefore this cable would not be needed. Um, our claw itself is a little bit weak. Uh, it's the sheet metal that we used that I picked up was too thin for our application, so several times the robot went down like this and then ran into a wall and bent the entire claw up, which was bad. Um, yeah. So just design-wise, there are several several things that could have been improved. Another thing is that the claw didn't grab with as much power as we wanted, even with the servo. So we should have replaced our servo with a stepper motor. Um, there's a lot. We used a lot of. Um, Velcro in order to attach our electrical components to things. It works pretty well for some things, but not very well for others. Uh, this year, I hope to use some more metal bolts and more like brackets and bracers, which we can machine um, pretty quickly and easily in order to hold important things to the robot. We had to get super Velcro in order to hold our, it's super Velcro, it's ridiculous. But yeah. Well, this is just that. It's really hard to use, uh, get things off of. We had to use Super Velcro in order to get our um, servo that we were using to keep from flying forward because of the way that friction works. Anyway, there were a lot of things that we could have done better on this robot, and I hope that this year we take into account all of those things. Um, now I'm just going to quickly talk about materials and what things do what. We have the ability to use pretty much everything. If you have an idea for something, sketch it out. And then we're probably going to do runs to like Urban Ore and other uh, secondhand shops so that we can find, they have random pieces of metal and specialty items that might specifically serve whatever function we want them to. 
Um, that's one of the greatest things about living in the Bay Area is that people just have a bunch of junk laying around that they get rid of, and you can go and find that junk and put it on your robot. Um, and it can usually be better than a specific, or better, or just simpler, or cheaper than a specifically machined object. Uh, just to give you a couple of ideas on what materials are acceptable. Uh, last year, the robot had to be under 18 pounds. Our robot was like nine pounds or something really small, um, simply because we didn't use all that much material. Uh, some, the heaviest robot, I believe, was a, the conveyor belt robot, and it was 16 pounds. Uh, weight probably won't be a problem unless you make essentially a metal box that runs around and does whatever the object is. Um, when you're thinking about materials, you have to know what the limits of your material are. For example, part, uh, this will only be strong that direction and that direction. It will not be strong if you have opposing forces on it. Uh, anyway, so if we were using this for anything, we'd want it to be like a bumper or something. We'd have to make sure that we weren't putting force in a specific place that we make it snap. Uh, one thing to notice is that there's a difference between tensile. What are the two? Strength, compressive, and ductile strength? Yeah. Yeah. So there's compressive strength, which is when something is really good at having pressure applied to it. Wood is a compressive material that is incredibly light. Wood will probably be one of the items that we use a lot because wood is incredibly light, it's incredibly strong, it's incredibly easy to use and mess with. The only problem that I have with wood is that it's kind of expensive. This is hardwood, pop yellow poplar. I got it on sale from Home Depot. Um, for a dollar for a large sheet, but it's actually more like you're like ten dollars a foot. Our money cap for extra extra pieces that they don't give us in the kit bot is probably going to be about two hundred dollars. So we have to always be considering what's the cheapest way that we can do something. Um, I have random bits of metal lying around. This actually came from a piece of like furniture. It's really strong. It's kind of heavy. I don't really know what we could possibly use it for, except beating things. Um, but it's just, you really need to start looking at what you have laying around that you can use in order to help build the robot for as cheaply as possible. One of my favorite materials that's really cheap and really, really effective is PVC pipe. PVC pipe is really easy to snap together, uh, very, very strong along the pipe, uh, really, really cheap, and really, really quick to cut. I have a PVC cutter and you just seriously just clamp down on it and it cuts. Um, there are some materials that are only strong when they are in tension, like this thumb. If it's not in tension, then it fails. That can give you a lot of different... It depends on what you want to do, but um, you can have something that is only taut when you want it to be taut, and then flax when you want it to flat. I know this is all really obvious, but it's just good for everybody to hear it be said. Uh, I don't know why I put this in there, but it's just foam. Um, this foam specifically keeps static electricity from breaking your electronics, so we might be using stuff like this in order to mount our electronics into it while we're just moving our electronics from point A to point B. Um, I know how pretty much everything here electronic-wise works. Does anyone have any questions at all before I continue? You said we're going to be working with Arduino, right? No, we're going to be working with Fez Panda. Um, yeah, freaking easy Panda. It's a .NET. Uh, it uses the .NET work framework instead of the Arduino framework. You'll be programming in C Sharp instead of a C++ derivative. Um, I don't know why specifically they use the Fez Panda system. I think it's because they're more familiar with C Sharp and also the entire .NET library. What I want to do with the group before we actually get the Fez Panda and all that is do a little bit of Arduino programming because programming is programming. Any programmer would hate me for saying that, but programming is programming. Getting a little bit of hands-on experience is important, and I have a lot of hard things. The Arduino um, uses it's sort of a Java derivative, but the scripting language is very close to C++. I'll bring in some of that, and we can do a programming demo next week, if you want to. Um, which reminds me, uh, I have 
I would like everyone here to go online to dropbox.com and get a Dropbox account because then we can start sharing files between everyone, which when we actually have programming files and scripting files, we'll be able to have one person update and then everyone will be able to look at it, change it, or upgrade it. Even though the robot will only be in one place, anyone will have access to it. Uh, and I'll tell you all about code and commenting. Um, yeah, everyone here should get a Dropbox account. Uh, one of the cool things about drop, my Dropbox is that I have all of my Arduino and all of my processing code. Processing is the computer side and Arduino is the robot side stuff. Um, so if you all get Dropbox and tell me what your Dropbox is, I can share my Arduino libraries with you and you can start working on it immediately during the programming demo next week off of these computers. If, for those of you who don't know what Dropbox is, it's basically internet storage that you can access from any computer. And it automatically syncs up stuff that you change on one computer with another computer if you have three Dropboxes. That's all I have. Um, the entire object of the game is probably going to get something, I don't know what, from point A to point B. And so that's basically just get your robot to perform some physical operation and then as quickly as possible and as accurately as possible and then get it to uh, accurately and then get it done. Last year what we had was we had a lot of robots in the operated zone running interference and almost no robots in the um, automatic mit automatic system. Uh, because I've spent a lot of time playing with sensors in the past year, I have a lot of sensors and I have a lot of experience with sensors. Anyone remember the range sensor that I was playing with? Yeah. Um, and so we can be using those and the libraries for those, the Arduino libraries for those, in order to make our robot work really well in any automated zone and therefore rack up a whole bunch of points. I don't know where the sheet that was like the rules from last year for newcomers to look at. I don't know where that is. I'm sorry. I handed it to someone who is new and I never got it back. Um, yeah. So yeah, the main thing that I wanted to get accomplished today was materials are good for different things um, and it's important to know which materials are good for what. One thing that I'm going to say again is that we have the ability to use the uh, AutoCAD software in order to draw shapes that we can then get laser cut on the acrylic or on the uh, camera with the white stuff's called. So if you, so we have a lot of variability on what we do with the white plastic. The problem with the white plastic is that it flexes in one dimension, but it's also very liable to shatter, and that's not something you want your robot to ever do. Um, but yeah. That's one of our major advantages, is the ability to rapid prototype any design that we have. Uh, and then, if we did that, we wouldn't have problems with cutting and we wouldn't have problems with distances or anything like that. That's one of the things I'm really excited about. If you draw a hole in AutoCAD, that hole is going to be that size, so and in that position on the eventual thing, so we'll never have a mishap like the wheels don't match. Um, yeah, that was terrible, wasn't it? <laughs> Um, yeah, so all I want you guys to get from this meeting is the form fits function and download Dropbox. <coughs> yeah, you can actually see that this wasn't quite as tense as I wanted it, tense, yeah, tense as I wanted it to be, so I actually shoved a nut under here so that it would actually do what I wanted it to. Yeah, there's there's too many ghetto fixes on this robot. Like, we have to improvise. oh, I used a lighter to melt the solder in order to hold the spring open. So there are too many ghetto fixes on this robot, which is why I want to start early um, and start strong. Yeah, the more preparation that you have for anything, the better off it will be. Since we end in the middle of early, I'm going to go off into my next topic, which is actually going to talk about next week. Hi. Don't be afraid to fail ever. We're going to have failures, we're going to have successes, hopefully we're going to have a really big success at the end. Um, but you'll never be able to improve if you're afraid of, afraid of failures. Uh, there's a lot... One of my favorite things about trial and error is that it's the way that we were all made. Um, we're basically giant. The Earth is basically one basic, basically one environment for trial and error, 
and that's basically all that evolution is, is trial and error working over time in order to make us as we are. So if randomness can make us from trial and error, I think that with a little bit of thinking, we can use trial and error to make something awesome. Although we don't have billions of years. We don't have billions of years, but we also have, like, creative thoughts. Okay, you know. true. <laughs> Good. True. So we're a step above microbacteria. Yes. One, two, or three. You know. Although some people might be considered macrobacteria. <laughs> um, yeah, so don't be afraid to fail. Uh, I'm, I hope that we have enough time to make mock-ups of any design that we want. Last year we did a lot of theory and not enough mocking up, so we just sort of went ahead and did it on the robot. Um, you can make mock-ups out of cardboard, you can make mock-ups out of any material. I would like for anyone who has an idea of how they want their eventual robot to work to come up with some form of mock-up, whether it's on the computer in 3D, on the computer in AutoCAD, or in real life, so that we can find any faults in the robot very quickly. Okay. So is there like a prize for this? Uh, it's, some, it's a small prize. Uh, it's mostly a plaque. It's a very big plaque. You can see, we actually have them. Mr. Merrill, do you still have the plaque from last year? No, I think people stay home. Mm. Mm. No, the big one. Okay. If there are any students that are in the building for Friday night school, Friday night school will be held on no, Nick. No, I don't know. I didn't even know they had Friday night school. Sure you did. Are there early Wednesday? Because we have more time. See this wall to put it on the thing. Anyway, I'm going to stop filming now. Okay.